Smooth muscles can maintain forced production for prolonged periods at a very low ATP consumption rate. A mechanism known as latch, also called as the latch bridge mechanism. This does not exist in a skeletal muscle. A skeletal muscle has to produce sustained force production for a long time. It will use lot of ATP, but smooth muscle can do it very economically at a very low ATP consumption rate. So this video uh, is a simplified view of how this thing happens. Though there are many uncertainties, we don't know many things about how the exact mechanism works. Um, but still, I will try to provide a simplified view of latch bridge mechanism in this video. We will start with the skeletal muscle, the cross bridge cycling. So these are the various steps of cross bridge cycling, continuously contraction relaxation, this whole cycle happens. In a skeletal muscle, this process starts at this point, like we will number it 1, uh, 2, 3 and 4. So this number 2 is the point where uh, skeletal muscle the cycle starts. The myosin is bound to, myosin head is bound to ATP, ADP and PI and it is in a cocked state and it is ready to bind to acting binding site. But it is not able to bind at the resting state because of presence of this protein called as tropomyosin. The tropomyosin prevents the actin and myosin coming together. So this is at the relaxed state in a muscle, here, here is where it starts. So once the tropomyosin moves away by presence of calcium, calcium binds to uh, this uh, troponin, calcium binds to troponin and it moves this tropomyosin away, now the myosin head can bind to actin and cause a power stroke in this. Head. So relaxed state, the, here is where the calcium enters the contraction begins, the myosin binds and here there is a power stroke, here is the force production. So the actin is pulled towards this side. And from here, now still the myosin have a higher uh, binding affinity to uh, actin because as far as it is bound to ADP and PI or inorganic phosphate, it can bind to actin, it has a higher uh, affinity to bind to actin. So from this state, the detachment of myosin happens only when a fresh ATP molecule, if it can bind to myosin head, after this ADP and PA goes away and the ADP binds, then only the myosin head loses the affinity to actin and the relaxation occurs. Detachment and the relaxation occurs. So once the ATP is bound, the myosin head immediately catalyzes uh, this ATP into ADP and PA. In the process, the myosin head also changes its angle in the process called as cocking of myosin. So the, at rest, the muscle, the myosin immediately gets cocked and it is at this state. If the tropomyosin is again, uh, it's open, it will just keep on continuing this cross bridge cycling. But once the uh, calcium concentration drops, if the tropomyosin comes back, the muscle again rests at this stage too. So the contraction is brought about by increasing calcium and the relaxation by decreasing calcium. So the cross bridge cycle starts at 2 and ends at 2. In the smooth muscle, this there are similarities in the smooth muscle, but there are important differences how this cross bridge cycling is controlled. Like let's go to the smooth muscle now. There are differences in structure, but just a broad outline, they are same. So here the smooth muscle, the resting state is at this 1, not at 2, like what we saw in uh, skeletal muscle. In the smooth muscle, the though there is a protein called as tropomyosin, it is not blocking the actin and myosin binding. Uh, the myosin can freely bind to actin, but there is a regulatory protein in the neck of the myosin. We call it as myosin light chain regulatory light chain, myosin light chain, MLC. This myosin light chain controls the ATPase activity of the myosin head. When this myosin light chain is phosphorylated, then only the ATP can be utilized and the myosin can go into the cocked state and with ADP and PA bound. Only this cocked state with the ADP and PA bound has the affinity for 
binding to actin affinity to actin whereas this state when atp bond it doesn't have the affinity to bind actin so the contraction is triggered by phosphorylation of this myosin light chain kinase which will cause the atp hydrolysis and then the myosin now can bind to actin and the cross bridge cycling goes on so the the at resting state the muscle is at one and then this process is initiated by myosin light chain kinase it's the enzyme which is going to phosphorylate this myosin light chain again which is a calcium calmodulin dependent activation is required for activation of this myosin light chain kinase we call it as mlck this rotates and then finally this uh, cycle keeps on going as far as this unit is phosphorylated it is able to exchange for adp into atp and the cycle continues how is the relaxation brought up though the calcium and the calmodulin concentration decreases and the myosin light chain activity also decreases the phosphate groups have been already added to the myosin so this alone cannot just stop the process of contraction and the cycling cannot be stopped by just by decreasing in the myosin light chain kinase activity what we need is that one more enzyme we call it as myosin light chain phosphatase mlcp which will remove the phosphate group which is added by the myosin light chain. it's added to the myosin light chain this causes decrease in the uh, atp hydrolysing capacity the atp is activity is decreased so the atp cannot the adp cannot form the affinity cannot be increased and the myosin cannot contract and the muscle goes into relaxation so this the one catch here is that the myosin light chain phosphatase can act at any step during this cross bridge cycling the cross bridge cycling is relatively slower in compared to the skeletal muscle so if the phosphate group is removed at this point now here is the muscle is in relaxed state it's about to enter a cross bridge cycling but it can be blocked at this point and the myosin and the smooth muscle remains relaxed but if the uh, phosphate group is remained uh, removed at a further downstream for example somewhere like here if the phosphate group from the light chain is removed here now the adp is still not exchanged for a fresh atp then only the myosin can detach the detachment rate of adp and the fresh attachment of adp is also decreased when there is a dephosphorylation so the muscle is now the myosin is still bound to actin and it's not able to detach and just maintaining the force which is already produced even though the phosphate group is removed the myosin is not able to detach because it is removed in a different stage of the cycling this this attachment is called as latching or latch latch so here the atp is not utilized but the muscle is producing a sustained force so not every time the smooth muscle when it is dephosphorylated it will go into this latch state it requires a it has a specific requirement that is it requires a balance between the myosin light chain kinase which adds the phosphate group and the myosin light chain phosphatase which removes the phosphate group so let's see how and when this latch mechanism can operate the myosin light chain kinase does adds the phosphate group to myosin light chain which causes the activation of the atpase activity once the atpase activity is added the atp is cleaved now adp and pa bond so adp and pa bond and leads to the increased affinity to actin the myosin becomes now have a higher affinity to actin now it initiates contraction so this cause uh, the cross bridge cycling and the contraction process is initiated and also this uh, myosin phosphorylation light chain phosphorylation facilitates the release of adp and pi and binding of fresh atp so this is essential for the process of detachment so as far as there is a high level of myosin kinase activity there is contraction is initiated and the detachment is also promoted so the cross bridge cycling rates are very high there is high amount of atp production and force generation so this is not the latch state we are talking about because it has a high atp production though there is a high force production 
what happens to this myosin phosphatase myosin phosphatase removes the phosphate group from myosin light chain this causes inactivation of this atpase activity which is in the myosin now atp cannot be cleaved into adp and pi there is no increase in affinity to axon so this promotes relaxation of the uh, muscle so the muscle cannot enter into a new cycle if it has come to a point of relaxation it stays at the level of relaxation that is stage 2 uh, stage 1 what we saw in the previous slide but if the if the myosin has reached already the stage 3 now there is a decreased release of adp and pa only phosphorylation can facilitate the release as we have seen here now the phosphatase has decreased the release of adp and pa this causes decreased binding of fresh ATP. Without it, the muscle cannot detach now. So there is if there is no ATP, muscle cannot detach. So it remains attached to the muscle. Uh, my uh, actin and myosin remains attached. Now, if there is a high level of phosphatase activity, um, again eventually some of them are already relaxed. Some of them are cannot be able to detect. Some of them has reached this latch stage of stage 3 in the previous uh, image we saw. But gradually the ATP will bind and then this will also go to relaxation. So we cannot maintain the latching with higher level of phosphate activity also. So what we need is a balance between this myosin light chain kinase and the phosphate activity. That is when we have high level of myosin light chain kinase the cross bridge cycling is on and on it's going on continuously so we cannot have that if there is a high level of myosin mlcp the entire state goes towards this end even initially some of them gets latched in this in this point the stage 3 but eventually everything will relax now what we need is that little bit of little bit of this kinase mlck and there is little amount of MLCP. So we call low level of MLCK is also active, low level of MLCCP is also active. So what happens now? This kinase activity just pushes the uh, uh, you know actin and myosin into this cross bridge cycle. Since this phosphatase is gradually removing, it temporarily blocks all the cross bridges at this latch, latch stage for some point of time. Though it gradually, it will take some time to go into the relaxed state, but temporarily it holds things over here. So this kinase pushes into the cycle and this myosin light chain phosphatase holds them at the latch stage without detachment. Since there is a low level of activity of this kinase and phosphatase, uh, the cross bridge cycling rate is decreased. There is less consumption of ATP, but the muscle, the more and more actin are, are stuck at this latch stage uh, causing energy efficient contraction this is the latch bridge mechanism which is giving the capacity of smooth muscle to produce sustained force at a low atp consumption rate thank you